afternoon, and welcome to UN News. My name is Ryan Sampson. The situation from the Senkaku Islands has escalated quickly. Just hours ago, the Japanese responded violently to the acts of the People's Republic of China. There have been both amphibious and airborne landings on the islands by the Japanese military. Also, Japanese warships have surrounded the islands in an effort to secure the area. To hear firsthand about this situation, we will now go to a Japanese official. We have uh, begun liberating the Japanese uh, Senkaku Islands from all foreign uh, combatants. Our ground forces have already secured over three quarters of the island, and the bulk of our maritime self-defense force uh, has been moved into combat support positions near the island. The invasion of Japanese uh, territory has effectively been neutralized. Just minutes ago, the Chinese government released the following statement. The People's Republic of China appeals to the international community to recognize the aggressive and illegal Japanese transgressions. Japan fired upon our soldier on Chinese soil in unsanctioned attack. This imperialistic era aggression will not be tolerated. The People's Liberation Army Navy has dispatched our full war fleet, which will be within striking range of Japanese position within hours. If the Japanese do not cease their assault within that time frame, we will destroy any Japanese ship, aircraft, or personnel on site. With this uh, surprising turn for the worse, it is clear that time is of the essence and that officials must act immediately. We here at UN News are hopeful for a swift and prompt resolution. Following this news, we will move to our expert panel, which will provide their opinions on the crisis and a little bit more insight on the situation. Hi, I'm joined here tonight by Morris Ferdinand from Springfield University and Benito Fernandez from Chihuahua University. <laughs> and I'm Candy Shetfield and I will be the moderator tonight. So, uh, can you explain when this conflict over the island started? Morris, do you want to start with that? Well, yes, the, the conflict has really been ongoing for hundreds of years. You have documents provided by China that states that the ownership of the islands has been Chinese going back centuries. Now, this is disputed by Japan, who says that through other means, Japan has actually been in control of the islands for a longer amount of time. Yeah. Okay, so who owns the islands right now? Well, uh, I think I'm going to start with this one. Uh, basically, right now, Japan is, um, they're the ones controlling the island, if you could say it like that. Um, there is no one really on the islands right now. It's not, a habit, it's not habited, but um, since it is disputed, that is why there's no people on the island right now. So people would live there if it wasn't disputed. Yeah. Well, yes, there could very well be some sort of settlement set up, especially since it is such an important geopolitical and economic location, which we will probably get into. Okay, so let's start with the Treaty of Shimonoseki. What did that accomplish? Um, so the Treaty of Shimonoseki of 1895 was signed between Japan and China after the First Sino-Japanese War. The treaty gave the island of Formosa, now known as Taiwan, um, from Chinese control to Japan. Now, Japan claims that the uh, Senkaku Islands were not actually included in this, which China disputes. Um, Japan says that the islands were terra nullius, unclaimed land, which gave them full rights to claim the islands as their own. I see. What about the Treaty of San Francisco? Well, basically, the Treaty of San Francisco was signed after the, uh, the Second World War, and it was signed between all the Allies and Japan. The only thing is that China wasn't present in those negotiations. So since China was not present in there, they claim that this is not a legitimate treaty. And what the treaty states was that Japan should return all of its territory that was acquired through imperialism, imperialist aggression. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. Okay, so what's China's official position on the matter then? 
China states that um, the Daoyu Islands, as they call them, have been under Chinese control and that they were acquired illegally by Japan um, under the 1895 treaty. China furthermore says that they have always been the official and legal owners of the islands. Now, curiously enough, China actually supports Taiwan's position on this because Taiwan, although not officially recognized as a country by the United Nations, is also claims legal ownership. Now, since the People's Republic of China claims full sovereignty over Taiwan, they therefore would get the Senkaku Islands under their control should they control Taiwan. So you get the strange case of the People's Rep Republic of China supporting the Republic of China, which usually never happens. Fascinating. Um, so how does Japan feel? Well, Japan claims that those islands are part of uh, their territory ever since uh, they claimed them as Terra Nullia. Uh, what basically what they said is that they were uninhabited when they took them over. And so legitimately, um, they uh, acquired the territory. They also claim that the San Francisco Treaty um, states that they are part of Japan's territory. And so, um, well, this is what China disagrees with, but basically that, that's Japan's stance. Mm. What about the US and Russia? How do they feel? Well, the United States really finds themselves in a bit of a sticky situation for this one. They have really strong trade ties with both China and Japan. They, have mil they actually have a military alliance with Japan that if the Senkaku Islands were to be attacked, they would have to go to the defense of Japan in order to um, get them back, presumably under the attack of China. I believe you know more about Russian politics? Uh, well, basically, the Russian stance of the matter is that uh, it's a little tricky since they are big trading partners with both China and Japan. Um, basically, what we were thinking is if there is more of a conflict that happens later on. Uh, Russia will probably side with Japan. Yes? Seems, seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, they will side with Japan. However, um, like we were saying, it's a tricky situation for most, for most countries at the, mo at the moment. What about other countries like the UK, France, Luxembourg, and Australia? Well, Luxembourg really doesn't have much of an official <laughs> position on the Senkaku Islands. They'd probably likely side with um, whichever voting bloc was able to get them the best deal out of this. Now, the United Kingdom and France and Australia have all remained officially neutral on this topic, as has the United States. So you really don't have any sort of clear sense of what could happen from any of them. Australia has to be especially important in their neutrality, as China and Japan are their two biggest trading partners, and they wouldn't want to seem that they prefer one of them over the other. Yes, definitely. And since they are so close to the matter, I mean, geographically, I think it's very important for them to be really careful about this. And why do they care so much about the islands? Well, basically in the 1970s, when the United States gave back the islands to Japan, there was a survey in which they found that there might be oil under the islands. And interestingly enough, this wasn't much of an issue before, but now that they found that there's oil in the islands, it's kind of become a pretty big issue for both countries. Fishing rights are also important. The, uh, the area lies almost equally between t China, Taiwan, and Japan. And any country that could officially claim the islands as their own would have a uh, better chance of getting their own fishing boats in there while preventing anybody else's from entering. Yeah. Okay, how do you see this conflict being resolved then? Hmm. Well, that's a tough question. Honestly, um, the way that it stands right now, it's very possible that it might escalate into conflict. Uh, however, for it to be resolved, I think uh, both countries need to step back and just see what the big picture is see what could happen if there actually is a conflict, and then there, there needs to be a discussion on the, on the matter. Just yes, both ja ja Japan and China are large economies, large countries with large militaries, and any sort of clash between them could have disastrous consequences for not only the region but the entire world. Diplomacy through the United Nations will be absolutely critical in settling this conflict. Definitely. Fascinating. I think that's all the questions I have. And back to you, Ryan. That is all we have for you today from UN News. Good luck to all the delegates working very hard on the situation. Best of luck trying to resolve the crisis. This is Ryan Sampson signing off.